So as E3 chugs along with not the biggest amount of pizzazz this year, the AoE foresight has been updated with both more details about France and the Abbasid dynasty, as well as some additional information about the other civilizations. So let's have a look through the Chinese and see what new information we've got there and what they've added to the website. So first let's have a read through the information they've got here. The Chinese civilization is one of impressive constructions, gunpowder strength, and a dynasty system that provides unique benefits and varied strategies to overcome the opponent. The Chinese civilization in Age of Empires 4 is a thriving, unique civilization that grows through their dynasty system over the years 907 to 1644 CE. They are powerful defenders behind formidable fortifications. Engineering prowess of the Chinese dominated the world for centuries, a trait present in Age of Empires 4. You live through the history as Chinese culture, strength and innovations create ripples across Eurasia, growing your empire as you move through vibrant Tsang, Song, Yuan and Ming dynasties. Your units speak Mandarin Chinese, a Sinitic language originating in North China. Then playing as the Chinese, at the dawn of their civilization the Chinese have a head start with additional villages. This lays the foundation for a robust economy fueling the needs of the great expansive civilization. City planning is an important growth strategy. A special trait of the Chinese civilization is their dynasty system, which offers several advantages when triggered, like unit bonuses and access to unique buildings. This gives several routes in strategy and ways to leverage all that the Chinese civilization has to offer. The military prowess of the Chinese lies in their mighty gunpowder units. They have access to multiple unique gunpowder units making them a fierce civilization to go up against in battle. Next we get to see a few of the unique units for the Chinese. The Imperial Officer, an official produced from the town center that collects gold from nearby buildings. The Fire Lancer, a cavalry unit from the Yan Dynasty equipped with a Fire Lance. Now historically a Fire Lance is basically a lance with a small cannon on it to act like a rifle, much like the hand cannoneers we're seeing. Then you have the Nest of Bees, a powerful siege weapon that fires an immense burst of rocket arrows in an area, and we've seen these in action before in some of the other images and videos. And next we get a little look at China through the ages. In Age 1, the Chinese civilization's imperial officials get to work right away in contributing to a healthy gold economy. As the civilization starts laying down the brickwork needed to move into the dynasties, Ensuring tax collection is working to its full advantage is key. So this is saying that you get these units very early on to help bring in that gold from the get-go. So gold's obviously going to be quite important, particularly for the Chinese by the sounds of it. Then in Age 2 is the Imperial Academy, one of the Age 1 landmarks, promotes focus on the Chinese civilization's growth-based layout. This landmark influences nearby buildings having them generate additional tax revenue, again really pushing the gold here for the Chinese. Then for Age 3, the Imperial Palace is one of the landmarks bringing you into Age 3, allowing the Chinese civilization to spy on an opponent and see what they are up to. Its considerable vision gives the Chinese a keen advantage, seeing over mountains and stealth forests, and an ability to spot enemy villagers. So that's going to be quite a big advantage to see what your enemy is up to. And also that reminds me of the technology upgrade you got in Age of Empires 2 for the spying. Then on to Age 4. The Great Wall is the Chinese civilization's great treasure and powerful defense structure. The landmark is one of the options bringing you into the final age, built upon stone walls to bolster the wall health and nearby units damage. So basically, that's quite nice to see a late game upgrade to walls and defences for the more defensive player perhaps. And finally we get to see a little bit more information on the dynasties. The dynasties are a unique trait of the Chinese civilization, and Chinese villagers can build both the landmarks from a single age. Doing so will trigger a dynasty with a unique bonus buildings and units. The Thang dynasty gives exploration bonuses, so vision for scouts, boosting early exploration efforts. Then there is the Song Dynasty and its population boom, which gives access to a unique village building, and the Zugnu, a repeater crossbow unit. This unique unit is going to be very similar to the 
Chukunu, which were the unique unit available to the Chinese in the Age of Empires 2 game. And reduction in village production time. Then you have the Yuan Dynasty, which is a food boom. This gives access to unique granary building and the Fire Lancer unit, as well as an increase in unit movement speed. And then finally, you have the Ming Dynasty, which is about military advantage, access to the unique Paragoda building and the Grenadier unit, and health bonus to all military units. So that's everything that the official website has been updated with. And in the background now, you can see the original Chinese Civilization Reveal fan preview, which if you watch it while I'm talking, you will see some of the units that we've just been discussing actually in action. Also, you'll notice one that hasn't been mentioned yet, which is the units with a Guando. These are the sort of moon reclining moon blades that you'll see some of the Chinese units with. And again, they should be a unique unit to the Chinese. These are seen as both ground units and cavalry units. So rather than make an epically long video, including all six of the factions, I'm going to stop this there. Tune in tomorrow where I will be going over the Delhi Sultanate in more detail, including what's on the website and any other little bits of information that I found out. And then following that, as the week goes on, each day I will release a new short video about each of the civilizations. Obviously, as always, comments down below. What do you guys think of the Chinese civilization so far? Are there things you like? Are there things you don't like about it? What would you change? Please do like, share and subscribe. And do make sure you subscribe so you get notified when those other videos go up for the rest of the week. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow.